Well, good morning, everyone. It's David Wetton. I just was working on some homework assignments last night and figured since we were going to talk about First Nations data and options, you know, maps, charts, dashboards, whatever, you, I always just package them all together and just call it, you know, user interface options uh, for non-geeky types. Um, I have to come up with an acronym for that one. Anyways, I uh, figured I might as well share them and just, you know, bring everything to the table, see what's going on. BC government's got a lot of options, and I think one of the problems they have right now is they've got way too many options. Sooner or later, everyone, we've got to get all that energy focused behind uh, the products the government wants to use, because collectively, uh, we could do some amazing things. So here's your standard spreadsheet. I got this, was using it, and I think I've used it before on some other projects. Um, comes off Data BC. It's a list of, you know, like who's who in First Nations and their address, phone number, some, you know, reference background. So nothing confidential. In fact, it's just kind of a giant um, phone book slash information database. It's got a lot of different titles um, or ti or options, as you can see there. It's just that you can't really get to them. I mean, you could use it, I guess you could just use filter options, but very difficult to actually extract it and a little bit cumbersome. So we can do a lot better these days. So just taking that information, you know, I'm not going to walk through it in this exercise, but flip it into a pivot table and turn it into a dashboard. And as you know, dashboards are, are flexible. You can basically choose what you want to put in them. Basically, you've got all your choices over here. You just kind of, you know, like you say, you pick and choose. Um, what, this is, goes into the pivot table just to get it started. And of course, all of these little uh, button thingies on the middle here are, uh, as you know, slicers. So they just um, operate by inserting them slicers. Slicers just give you a choice saying, well, which one of these fields would you like to have on the screen? Probably not all of them because it would just be so um, difficult and some of them would just be illogical. So a question of finding a nice comfortable balance. Um, the idea here is to make a user friendly tool and not uh, 747 cockpit. But that seemed like a reasonable dashboard if, you know, I was sort of thinking about I want to know where people are so I can, f you know, follow it this way. So really, this just allows me to find people uh, based on certain queries like service agencies. Um, what's in Abbotsford? And I see there's two. And oh, let's go with this provincial council. Well, there's the region. There's their phone number. There's the postal code, city, mailing address, type of organization, subtype, yada, yada. So kind of depends what makes sense. Since they're so easy to make anyways, you can create these dashboards. You make If this one isn't quite tweaked the way you want it, you tweak it another way. In fact, you just make a couple of dashboards. This is an Excel worksheet, so dead simple. Um, could be shared on SharePoint, so no one needs Excel to use it. If you do that on SharePoint, you just want to make it less clunky, because again, I find anything you're doing over the web is a little bit slower. So really the question is just what's of any value to you. Um, you can pick a city. Oh, what was that? I've never seen that one. 101. I wonder where that is. Anyways, I don't know where it is, but it's in the Northeast, Halfway River First Nations. Um, but there's their address and email and phone number and postal code and mailing address if I wanted to go there and their affiliations. And of course it does permutations, combinations. So if you want to pick just one, you Armstrong and Bella Coola and Burnaby, well, there they are. I'm not quite sure of the logic of that query, but that is the answer based on the data. So again, question of people um, just narrowing down their choices. And since it's just a user-driven query interface, if you don't, you know, just go back and do another one if you need to. Of course, the main thing for my homework that in this exercise was around the maps, which is just another option tool in Excel. So I just fired up a Power View map in Excel, um, basically create the same kind of logical if you want to call it a pivot table map, pick the ones I want um, down here. It's just a matter of drag and drop, so it takes a matter of seconds to decide how I want the data displayed and, you know, what is it you want to display. Obviously, a map isn't like a dashboard. A map can only map uh, a limited amount of information, so it should be the important stuff. So in this case, my exercise for homework was just seeing how the, you know, the levels of hierarchy that could be mapped just automatically, how the system would work. So apparently the Excel system recognizes countries, province, cities, and even postal codes. 
And so by setting them up in this manner of, you know, like biggest, medium, small, you know, like you're basically doing a classic drill through. So you've created a data hierarchy, which was reflected on the map. So here's the Canadian answer. You know, if you click on it, you'll go down to the province level. Next one would be city level here. So again, here's the data displayed by city. Um, and as you can see, you, you know, you're, the amount of data you can display on a map is, is less than you could put on a dashboard. So um, you just think carefully about what it is that the map would actually do for you. So again, um, I wanted to test out the postal code level. So again, here's Kamloops, the office, uh, or again, gives you the information on the things I've chosen. Um, in this case, I've chosen to limit the number of subtypes just because, you know, I can turn them on or turn them off. It depends. So again, user driven. But in this case, I wanted to go down another level in Kamloops. So now this is mapped to the postal code level. So in fact, it's almost like a, not quite like a GPS system, but I mean, it gets postal code zones, I suppose, are constrained. So it's not precise enough for, you know, smart missiles, but I suppose it would get you into the neighborhood. Of course, and I think if I was going to do this one, I would probably, you know, if I wanted to actually use this kind of for a driving assistant, um, can actually do it this way. Just go into the real map to say, well, okay, apparently, um, these are the locations of the uh, offices. This is the um, skill, the train skills and employment training strategy. This is the office for the Child and Family Services Agency. So, assuming the postal codes get you pretty close, you could probably, uh, if you, I, you know, I'm sure there's better ways to navigate. But it's interesting that this is a New York Excel data. It's in Excel for free. So essentially, you can go from street level. Um, or just pop back up to city, to province, to country. And that map, of course, was built in Excel in about three or four minutes. Could be shared again on SharePoint, but I still find that working directly with the Excel files fastest, but not everyone has Excel. So that's part of the issue of like who you're trying to serve. Anyways, just some options. Um, didn't want to get into the 3D mapping because I don't think this data really warrants 3D mapping, but it, the um, the basic tools are available. So these are just some ideas we can look at and certainly uh, see what other options are available now. Cheers.